Hello my woolly wanderers and welcome to my home. My name is Joanne Piner and I am from Reapin Crafts. So firstly I would like to say a massive thank you to everybody who liked and subscribed to my channel this week. So last week I think I had 70 views by the time Sunday came round. This week as we speak now which is Sunday evening I have 362 views and 36 subscribers so I am mega mega chuffed with that as you can imagine. So what, do, what am I talking about this week? Well I think you can see I'm surrounded by my lovely spinning wheels here. Um, my husband does want me to get rid of one as you can imagine but as I said someone might want to learn to spin so I'm happy to keep all of them so probably the answer is never. As you can see my wheels are all slightly different. We're going to talk about this one first which is an Ashford traditional. Now this is a Saxony spinning wheel which means the wheel is offset to the side, the treadle is here and it just has a different way of spinning. There are you know, quite a lot of these on the market which you can pick up anywhere from £100 onwards. Um, I, I, I mean this is kind of when you say spinning wheel this is kind of synonymous and what people think of actually but yeah they also have the bobbin and the flywheel to the side. The next wheel we're going to talk about is my Kiwi 2. Um, this wheel with the single treadle actually didn't feel right with my back I've got a bad I have a bad back and so that's why I came on to this one next and I bought this one brand new and it's a double treadle Kiwi. This is the 2 um, version which means it doesn't fold up the third version of it does so it's a castle spinning wheel so basically we have the flyer the bobbin and the drive wheel all in line I spun loads on this as you can see I actually painted it as well um, did me for many many years which I've thoroughly enjoyed and then someone walked into my guild with one of these. This is a Lendrum, it's made in Canada which uh, is quite close to my heart because my granddad was Canadian and it's made of maple as well which I love. There are a number of reasons why I really love this wheel. The flyer and the bobbin and the mother of all can come up to meet you. The wheel is actually at an angle and it's leaning towards you as you're spinning. The orifice is here and once again it's a double treadle. It's also a castle spinning wheel with the two, with the two treadles. Expensive. More expensive than the Kiwi obviously but for me it ticked a lot of boxes with my back and I'm actually a bit taller so with my height as well. So I was very lucky that for my 50th birthday I was bought that last year. So in this video we're going to talk about the parts of the spinning wheel, we're going to talk about how to treadle which is really really important. A lot of people not skip over it but don't spend long enough learning how to treadle properly which actually makes us relax which is what all these crafts are about. You know we take on crafts to help us to relax and so being able to treadle correctly really helps us. We then move on to some practice wool and we take a big length of wool and we put this on our spinning wheel. So just a bit of yarn stroke wool wherever you're from um, and we use that to be able to get hold of the tension. It's really good to understand about what the tension slide does and so using a piece of wool or yarn we can actually gauge where we are with the tension and then lastly I talk about different pieces of wool which you can start off with. Um, this was going to be just one video talking about spinning but actually I'd make two shorter videos so this week it will be me talking about all these things and then in the middle of the week I will upload my next video which is then talking about actually spinning wool. Once again I hope you enjoy the video, 
come back and see me. Don't forget to like, subscribe. If you've got any friends and you think they may like the videos too, please share them with like-minded people. We really want to grow this community together. Without further ado, let's get started. So here you can see we have a bobbin. The bobbin comes off on the lungeon. It's very easy to come off, which is great. This is a bobbin. This is where your spun wool will be stored. We put the tension. Sometimes it's wire, for this one it's actually cotton. And then it goes through onto the mother of all. Okay, this is your flyer, which goes round, which goes round with the drive wheel here and the drive band here which has tension under it as you can feel as you can see sorry right okay with the lendrum you get the orifice hook for the orifice yes you heard me right orifice woo woo yeah orifice this is called an orifice this is called an orifice hook okay and this is how we will get our wool out that actually fits really lovely on there. And with the Lendrum, you can see we've got the double treadle. We've got the footmen here, which go up and down, and we've got the double treadle here. When we're spinning, we want the wall to go from our hands, or whatever way you want to do it, onto, through the orifice, through the hooks and then it wraps around onto the spindle. Now, one of the most important lessons I was taught before I started spinning was to actually treadle correctly. And this took me some time. Uh, with the one treadle, it's different than the two treadles. So for the minute, I'm going to show you on the Lendrum and then I will go over to the traditional and show you on that one, because a lot of people start on the traditional. So without anything on the wheel at all, I'm able to treadle. So for us and for me, I spin in the Z twist, so I go clockwise. So you can see my wheel is going round in the clockwise, so I'm just going to stop and start again. We're going in the clockwise direction. Hopefully you'll be able to see something on the screen to explain that. When we ply, we go back the other way, okay? I'm not going to talk about that today. We're just going to cover the basics. The most important thing we need to get used to doing is treadling consistently. So, I was a musician in His Majesty's Royal Marines Band for 11 years. And so for me, I love rhythm. In fact, that's what drew me to spinning in the first place. I used to watch women at craft fairs, etc., spinning. And the meditative form of treadling, just, I just thought I want to be able to do that myself. Because it really reminded me of pulse and rhythm like we have in music. Now, don't get me wrong, you can go like a mad thing, but you do not want the wool going on that fast, okay? It's not gonna spin properly. And actually, all of this is about slowing down. This whole process is about slowing down. So this is where it starts. It starts with the treadling. So, I was thinking of a song we could sing. Oh, the grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. There's a bit of rhythm for you and a song. Now, what happens when you're starting is you end up like that and it will go backwards and forwards. I don't know why I'm talking like that too, but that is exactly what happens. You're 
oh, I can't get it going, I can't get it going, and oh. So, just a few tips. Sometimes you need to start it off, okay? And that's just a gentle pull. I mean, on the traditional, you can just grab hold of the wheel and just push it around, and that gets it going, okay? With this one, you can do the same. But with a double treadle, you have got the ability to be able to start one foot over the other. Okay, that is, that's quite a difference with the double treadle as well. So as you can see, I've stopped. So I've got one up, one down. It's just like riding a bike. And so I'm gonna start pedaling, treadling, okay? So we will need to think of us being on a bike in the countryside riding along in a beautiful day slowly okay no worries in the world and that's us treadling now as i said to you i haven't got a drive band on but i'm still able to show you how to treadle with this just help drive it around the right way with this one it's a bit different So we have one treadle there, as we spoke about earlier. We've got the footmen, which are here at the front. As I said to you, with the traditional, it's quite hard to get it going. I don't know why I'm talking like that again, but it is. So I give it a good, I give it a good shove. Now what happens when we do that, you, you want to go off like that. No, 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 no. So we make it go, and then we one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. So if we go against it, and it will want to go the other way when you first start, and you think, oh my goodness, it's just doing what it wants it to do. It wants you to relax. When you fight it, it doesn't work properly. So it's push the wheel, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And as you can see, the wheel is going quite happily like that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, oh, the grand old Duke of York. He had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. My foot is doing one treadle. With the other one, obviously, I'm doing double treadle. So it is a bit different with the pulse. But that one, sits really nicely like that. So for me, counting really, really worked. Keep having a go at that. Don't move off the treadling, and I know you really, really want to, but whoa, slow your horses. Don't move off this until it's consistently smooth. We want it just nice and smooth. Okay. Once you've done that, and I'm gonna move back over to the lend room now, because obviously I've got a drive band. Right, the next bit I want you to do is to use a bit of practice wool. So I've done the length of my arms there, and I'm just gonna do it twice over. Okay, we've got a nice long bit of wool and we're going to attach this to our bobbin. So what are we going to do with this bit of wool? We're going to practice with it. This is going to go around our bobbin and then we're going to be able to pull the wall in. And I want you to see about the tension. It's really easy to have too much tension so it, the wool will just shoots off onto the bobbin and sometimes it's really hard to get the wool to take. Every single bit of wool that you end up spinning will have a different consistency and feel. And the more you understand about the tension and what it feels like, 
the more you'll be able to understand how to spin that particular wool because obviously we want the right twist in it. So I'm going to tie this onto the bobbin. The easiest way to do it is just to open that up and pull it through like that. Okay, now as we spoke about on the Lendrum, we have a orifice hook. So this is the orifice hook. Uh, it's just a bent bit of metal really, so it's very easy to make yourself as well. Okay, so for my particular wheel, I go through the hook. I go through the next hook. Here, this side, if you can see, I've got a hole, you can only just about see. So I put my hook into the hole, into the orifice, and then I pull it through. So that's coming through nicely onto my wheel. As I said for my wheel, I can just start it off. So I'm waiting for it to take on the twist. I'm going to adjust my tension because at the minute my bobbin doesn't want to go. So if you look in, okay, that is really, really overspun. It's really hard and my tension is very tight. Now it's wanting, as you can see, it's absolutely escaping me. It's going through so fast. Goodbye. And it's all gone. Okay, I can't actually pull it out very easily as well. So I'm going to loosen the tension at the back. And as soon as I start to loosen the tension, I'm able to pull the wall. There we go. So let's start again. So I'm going to treadle. And off it goes again. But this time, can you see, it didn't escape me. So I'm getting some twist in there. It's gonna zoom in. So I got twist. But it's not rock solid. And the twist is then pulling on to the bobbin. Okay, I'm going to take it back out. As you can see, I can pull it out nicely. Now, let's go the other way. So let's take some of this twist out. As you can see, it's very, very twisted. So I'm just going to let that out a bit. And that's really what we're doing with the wool, is we're twisting the wool so that it comes together to make something that we can use to knit with, crochet with, and weave with. Okay, right, I'm going to loosen the tension off now. Just going to pan back out again. So I've loosened the tension off. This is not really on. Now, so you can see the flywheel's going round. The flywheel's going round, yep. Yeah. And this is twisting because it's attached to the flywheel. But what it's not doing is grabbing hold of and wanting to go on to the bobbin. So look what's happening. I'm just gonna pan in. Look what's happening to my wool. Okay, it's all over twisting and it has none of it has been actually put on to the bobbin. Let's undo that again. Unspin it. We want to be somewhere in between the two, don't we? We want to be good enough so that it's taking it on. Not too fast. So I'm just going to show you too fast again. So I'm going to tighten that right up, the tension. So I'm going to keep hold of the end here. There's the end. And I'm going to start treadling 
and you watch. Ooh. That's how quickly that is. And when I go to pull it out, it doesn't want to come out. Okay. So we want to be somewhere in between. So that is taking on, but it's taking on nicely. It's not ripping out my hand and it's not building up all the twist here and not going on. So that's going on really nicely. I wanted to talk to you now about what kind of wool we start off with when we start spinning. It'd be easy for you to pick up some of this off the internet uh, this is Polworth, absolutely beautiful. So, so soft. Mm, just next to the skin stuff, gorgeous. I've also got this wool, which is called, let me just find out, Sakura by Lauren from World of Wool. Beautiful colours, as you can see. These are called rovings. And as you can see, all of the fibres go in the same direction. The same as this beautiful Polworth I've got here. Everything is moving in the same direction, okay? We've then got my dog coming in, letting herself in. Thank you, Sooty. We've then got some, this is Shetland, and these are slivers. So. This is carded wool now. So we've got roving, which is everything. Sorry about my dog. So we've got everything going in one direction and we've got carded wool where the wool has been brushed and everything is all in, in all different directions. And as you can see, it's kind of stuck to each other a bit better. Obviously a roving as well, all in one direction. Okay, these make beautiful. This is core wool, which is carded once again. I've pre-drafted some for you, so you can have a look at it. And when you're starting out, I would buy something like this. You don't have to get a great deal of it because you won't be on it for very long. But what you don't want to do is buy some beautiful stuff like this, which is obviously more expensive and end up with loads and loads of knots and everything that you kind of start off with when you start spinning. OK, so I would recommend going for something carded to begin with, which just makes it a bit easier for you to take control of. And I'm just gonna talk to you about drafting. So drafting means, and pre-drafting means, for example, I'm going to pull the wool. I don't want to break it off. I don't want to do that. I want to do this. So that when I'm coming up to it, and there's some VM there, so we can take that out, which is a bit of vegetable matter. So I'm pre-drafting the wall here. So can you see? It's a bit finer, but when it goes onto the spinning wheel, you're having to deal with less bulk. Okay, so that really does help. So I'll show you how that works in a minute when we get it on the spinning wheel. I've done that a bit there. Now, if you do have some merino, because I'm not saying for a second, don't use it. That's quite thick. So what we can do is just make it into something a bit thinner. We can kind of split it up into three different sections. And we can also pre-draft the merino. It is a bit more difficult as you can see. But there you are. You can pre-draft that too. So that looks a lot longer than that. So that's more bulky, that's less bulky. So what are we trying to do with the wool once it goes into, into the orifice and onto the bobbin. So we know that's weak, okay? Now, if I take the same bit of wool here and I get hold of it and I start, I'm just gonna lick my fingers, I'm just gonna start twisting it, okay? 
and I'm going to twist it. So that's not got much twist in it. I can hardly break that now. Let's untwist it again. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, isn't it? I love wool <laughs> for that reason alone. So when you first start spinning, you make some great art yarn. Here is all of mine. This is me when I first started spinning and I kept it all. And actually, when you watch people, they're always saying, oh, make sure you keep your first spins. I mean, this is obviously where I first started. Really, really overspun wool. And then some not so spun, and then some really overspun. This is great art yarn. <laughs> it's really hard to make that now because you're so used to not doing it. You can just see it's just a real bunch of what's it's. <laughs> but I kept it all because it was just really important to me to, well, celebrate that I'd actually made something out of wool. As you can see, I use core wool, you know, just carded wool. It doesn't have to be core wool, but carded is great. Oh, got some beautiful locks there. Goodness, those beautiful locks. Take them out. Yeah, so this is some of my spun stuff. I think a moth's got in here somewhere. That's the other thing with wool. There you are, there's some <laughs> super fat, chunky stuff. But yeah, great. And it's so good to look back on. I mean, this is like noils. It's just. Yeah, it's so like what you're trying to make now, if you're doing art yarn. And yet, when, uh, sorry, when I was uh, starting off, yeah, super, super easy to do. So I kept all of that, and that's what everybody tells you to do. Make sure you keep your first spun stuff. So anyway, so that's mine. Yeah, this is like not, this, this one's hardly got any, I mean, some bits have just got no twist in it and that, that's been really overspun. Anyway, so that's mine. So then I got onto kind of spinning like this. So when it was plied together with something else, resembled some wool. So I wanted to do something with my wool. So I thought I'd just bring this down to show you. Okay. <laughs> so in the middle of this, let's just try and get that in focus. Yeah. So it's a bit all over the place, thick and thin bits. But I just thought, do you know what? I'm just going to crochet it. And that's what I did. This is alpaca actually. And um, I started spinning alpaca quite soon because I just really liked the texture of it as well. Um, that's my next bit. You can see. So got a bit better. Then this is all just bought wool. And then I did some in here getting a bit better then I think sorry I'm just trying to get it in focus for you I'm looking that way because that's when my cam I've got another little camera showing me and then that one there which you can't really not really grabbing fake oh there we are there we are anyway yeah this is a huge granny square my, uh, the biggest granny square ever oh yeah so that's something that I started with my wool um, when I first started, when I first started spinning. So whatever you do, don't be ashamed of it. Make sure you keep it. It's really great to refer back to because you may start teaching as well one day. And I think it's just really interesting looking at, you know, because I spin so finely now, it's actually really hard to spin fat and thin like that and when you're doing art yarn that's exactly what you're meant to do so you do a bit which is 
heavily spun and then you do a bit which is fat and you let it go through oh, it's just really difficult to do so yes when you first start spinning you do lots of that okay i'm going to move the camera again so that we're back by the orifice and we're going to look at some wool going onto the bobbin and actually spinning some wool <laughs> 